between Raw and Marty Gallagher and J.P. Bryce on ICTV. Today we're going to talk about squats. Um, tons to cover on this one, so what we're going to do is we're going to divide it into two parts with uh, part one consisting of squat roots and part two probably next week. That will be about, uh, we'll discuss techniques and, and tactics Perfect. on that one. So... Um, we're going to discuss this with Marty Gallagher, and he probably knows more about the barbell back squat than anybody. Uh, so let's get into some questions. First question I want to ask is, um, Marty, you're actually an exponent of the School of Strength. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, I uh, I mentored under national and world champions from a very, very young age. And from about the age of 15 onward, I was training with grown men who uh, later became national and world champions and world record holders. And so I got my, <clears throat> my techniques from them and I was an exponent of a school of strength that we had very highly thought out techniques in the squat, the bench, the deadlift. Uh, powerlifting wasn't formalized until 1965. Before 1965, maybe it was 1964, it was not a sport. Um, so the AAU got it together and made it a sport. So you had a lot of Olympic lifters who switched to powerlifting and our squat style was based on Olympic lift core techniques. You're tracking, you with me? Yeah. So my, my main mentor was a guy named Hugh Cassidy who was the first uh, super heavyweight world champion. He was also national champion. Uh, and Hugh patterned his squat style, which was highly stylistic, on Paul Anderson. And Anderson was uh, the first American superstar of strength, really. 1956 Olympic champion, generally considered the greatest powerlifter in history. Uh, so far ahead of the rest of the world that, you know, it didn't really even matter. Uh, but a Anderson burst on the scene in 1953 when he squatted 767 at age 19 and his style was incredible he did he did it in bare feet wearing a, a lifting uniform I'm, I actually have a picture though I'm going to try to hold this up I don't think you guys are going to be able to see that but if you're able to see that the characteristics, this picture was um, it was like the genesis of the, the squat style that, that we based our entire school of squatting on, which was ultra deep, uh, parallel, uh, your shins were vertical, your torso was vertical, essentially the only thing that moved was the femur, right? You've got an upright torso, you've got vertical shins, these are all leg squats, and that's what Anderson was doing in this photo. It's super deep, no wraps, no belt, uh, very upright, all leg. We wanted our squats to be all leg. And because they were all leg, uh, we built gigantical legs. And Cassidy, I think, was the fifth man in history to, to squat 800. And he did that raw, no suit, no belt, no wraps, nothing, uh, ass on heels, super deep depth. But as ex-Olympic lifters, I was an ex-Olympic lifter too, we had to recover from the bottom position of a squat clean. And partial squats are of no help doing that. You have to do ultra deep stuff. And yes, we did our front squats. But we also learned to do ultra deep Olympic lift style back squats, right? 
because we needed that, that ability to come out of the ultra deep hole with a heavy clean on our shoulders. And if your legs aren't strong enough, you can't recover. There's always, there's a couple of things that I always noticed on Cassidy squat style, which is your squat style. It's how, just how vertical the shins are. Correct. I mean, it, it's like someone, you know, they're just being held there. They, they pretty much just don't move. You know, a lot of guys tend to come forward a little bit, just just a little bit. You're not supposed to go past your 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 feet with your knees and, and all that. But uh, you guys are just, um, you know, that hinge there at the knee, it's really working and just coming down, and those shins just stay where they're at. The other thing is um, you guys were always focused on the ground. I couldn't tell in, in Paul Anderson's picture that you held up if he was focused on the ground. But talk no. about that and why Hugh did that and why he wanted you guys to do that. All right. Well, let me loop back around because you raised a good point, but there's another point that we skipped over. And yes, the verticality of the shins were critical, but equally critical is we never wanted the payload to get in front of the knees, right? You didn't want it, you didn't want to lean forward with your squats because if you lean forward with your squats, you've got to derrick them back into position, and we wanted to avoid that. How do you avoid that? Well, you keep the payload over the knees or behind the knees, right? With me. Okay. And, and to learn that, we talked about this yesterday, to learn that, uh, like we've got one of our guys that has uh, adopted your squat style, and, you know, he was squatting it more of a, a little bit more forward than uh, you guys do, and we talked oh, yeah. about yesterday about breaking all that down and starting with absolutely no weight, holding on to a doorway, because honestly, you know, when... When your shins are that vertical, um, and you're coming, you're coming way back, and it's awkward at first. You feel like you're going to fall backwards. So you really it takes something that you have to really practice at. We find that the easiest way to teach proper squatting is the the kettlebell under the chin. What do they call it? The goblet squat, mm. or you can clutch a plate. You you know pull a thirty five or a forty five plate squat. You know, and then it gives you a counterbalance. But, but the whole game is you've got to learn to relax and squat to the basement. And that's what we used to have to do. We, so we built our squats from the bottom up. Every, everyone in this day and age builds their squats from the top down, right? And the depth was what gave us the strength because it made it so difficult that it became entirely leg-centric. And that was our squat school. And I, you know, uh, Chalet and Mark Dimaduck were up directly to Cassidy's school. And both those guys, uh, Chalet squatted a thousand legitimate at uh, 275. I know, I called him up. Uh, Mark Dimaduck was, was hell on wheels. He was the world champion at 220. He was uh, Hughes' number one student. <coughs> and, um, all these guys are incredible squatters with the identical technique. And we birthed Kurwaski, right? Like Kurwaski was the, you know, what Cassidy handed down to me, I handed down to Kirk. Now he didn't, and uh, so we get, let's get back to focusing on the ground for a second because we talked about this, that Kirk didn't do that. He kind of took your style and tweaked it just a little bit. No, we allowed him. But at least where he was focusing. I didn't think it was important. Hugh's point was that he called it triangulation. And he would have us look forward. He got screwed up because he went to his first powerlifting competition and he'd been used to staring at his basement wall. And then when he took the, you know, the weight out of the racks to squat it, he's looking at an audience of people. Every, everything's jiggling around, okay. right? So it, it screwed up his balance. So what he's uh, postulated, and he was a thinker, is that you would 
to avoid looking at the ever-changing background of a competition that you have no control over, look 10 feet in front of you to the wooden floor and you drill your eyes into a single spot and that's your triangulation. Your, your right heel, your left heel, your eyes focused on that spot 10 feet ahead. Uh, I, you know, I heard it, I did it myself, but Kirk didn't like it and I didn't think it was that critical. Yeah. So again, okay. Kirk probably wanted to look at the audience while they're worshiping him, squatting, right? That's right. Why would you want to miss that? <laughs> well, you don't want to miss that. <laughs> so I never heard the story, so that's, that's interesting. All right, so, and by the way, for anybody that wants to see this uh, squat style in action, there's a great video that you, uh, you filmed in your garage of you squatting. Uh, this is on YouTube. No, no, don't go to that. Go to Kirk's. Kirk is the best example. That was not, no, don't go to that. It's not of a good time. Yeah, but this is very impressive. Let me just say, no. anybody wants to see Marty Gallagher squatting? No, don't. 255 for 10 reps at 67 years old, bottomed out to the basement. Um, beautiful form. Go check that out on YouTube. I disagree. I do not do it. <laughs> yeah, look um, at Kirk also. Go to Kirk, guys, 800 for 5, YouTube. Right. Worship him, start a religion. So, let's talk about frequency. Well, uh, now, now you're getting into uh, techniques and tactics. See, we wanted to talk about the genesis of the technique and why we squat the way we do. Right. And, and we told you that our squat technique was built in pursuit of world records. That we got and hold to this day. I mean, Karwaski still, you know, yeah. I don't, how long has he been retired? 17 years. And he yeah. still holds the world records in his division because he was that great. And again, what, 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 what did he do? He used our techniques and our tactics. Although we cut back, we modified we modified the programming, and that'll be interesting when we talk about tactics and programming in the next the next one. And again, this is interesting because uh, really, you really need to see the squat to appreciate the squat. And we're just verbally kind of giving you all a kitty right. be quiet. Now, now he and a bunch of other, a bunch of other your guys. I mean, they became world champions just doing you know, squatting once a week. Yeah, yeah, but uh, this was, uh, I mean, if you're, if you're squatting, you know, 705 for five, and later in the week you're, pull, you're deadlifting 745 for five, um, there's a cumulative effect that, you can't squat and deadlift twice a week and recover past a certain poundage point, right? It's one thing to recover if you're uh, squatting, you know, 135 for five and deadlifting 185 for five. You know, that takes less time to recover than if you're doing 600, right? Right. Well, exactly. And you know what? I always got my best results. And, you know, I, I'm nowhere near where you guys were, but uh, I have a deep passion for for lifting heavy weights and bodybuilding and all that. But um, I always got my best results from once a week. And each week, and I followed more of the Dorian Yates thing. And, you know, he was... Oh, Dorian was, was... That was... He was us. Yeah, he was us with four... Reps, That's all. Much. Yeah, he was powerlifting. He was powerlifting with forced reps. Angles, yeah. Exactly. He was power. In fact, I read an article on that one time. <laughs> you know, the other thing that we don't ever talk about too, and just real quick because we got to move on. But um, as you get older, you can't squat two, three times a week. You wear yourself out. You wear out your joints. 
Why? Why? Okay, come on. Let, just leave it. Let it go, dude. You only need, if you squat right and you deadlift, you only need to do each once a week. They work so many of the same muscles. Think about it. That's right. They work the glutes. They work the upper thighs. Right. They work the erectors. Uh, if you squat right, I mean, your traps get a workout. I mean, you, you know, there's so many of the same muscles. And again, if you're knocking the hell out of yourself in each of those sessions, you got to you got to have time to recover, right? I yeah. mean, that's the but game. I... And, and if I'm not, <clears throat> I tell you another thing. If I'm not recovered, I'll blow it off. If I need another 24, 48. 72 hours uh, okay well I'm going to take it okay because I need to be fresh when I do progressive resistance training not so much cardio but if I'm lifting I need to be fresh yeah, but I, I'm not going to dog it I'm not going to blow it off I'm not going to not do it but <clears throat> I'll take an extra day if I'm if I'm dead now if, if you were in a 12 week cycle for competition, I don't know if you'd have that luxury, would you? Well, I'm not in a 12 week competition to the cycle for competition. Right. But, so you didn't have that <laughs> option back then, but now that you're, when you're not competing and all that, yeah, listen to your body. Yeah, right. But I also wasn't stuffing my face with lasagna for breakfast either, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, trying to get massive, right? Yeah, I mean it's a different world. I wasn't drinking six quarts of whole milk a day, and you know, you know what I mean. Yeah. Different time. All right. And so this this whole squat style that we're talking about. Um, High, highly stylistic, but. Yeah. Based on Anderson, 1953. Right. But is the but is the style and approach? Would you say it's applicable to everybody or only elite guys? What would you no. say? No, it's uh, first off, this is the proper technique, regardless of your body proportionality. You can be uh, long leg, short torso. You could be short leg, long torso. You could be equally proportioned. It doesn't matter. You too can achieve the ass on heels, uh, vertical shins, upright torso. You have to play with your stance width. That's the game. You know, most people pinch their stance width and their um, knees end up outside their ankles. You don't want that. You want your knees over your ankles, right? Everything's power, like architecture. We don't build houses with, with uh, uh, cur you know, curved or outward or inward walls. We build buildings and houses with, you know, 90 degree walls. That's the same way we want to squat and deadlift. And we could even video them and show them to people with on film. Yes, we could. All right. Anything else you want to say about the squat? I already know it. Anything you want to know about the squat is really what we want to... is the question. All right. Well, we got a lot in there for the, the first one. Next week... Part two, we talk about techniques and tactics to get into the trenches with all that info. So tune in next week. Um, also, as we close out here, I want to say, uh, ask everybody to check out Marty's weekly column uh, and podcast videos. What we're going to do, we've, we've now got a podcast page on our website. If you go down to the footer and, and uh, click on podcast, we archive all these live videos. So if you guys um, missed part of it or want to go back there, it's also on YouTube. So check that out. Check out uh, Marty's weekly columns. We cover a lot of this stuff in great detail. The, the squat, the bench, the deadlift, just nutrition, everything. Check that out at ironcompany.com. And also, if you're in the market for fitness equipment or gym flooring, we can help you guys out there, too. Um, Marty's got his books on our website, Purposeful Primitive. And, you know, we, now that we're doing these shows, 
we hear weekly from guys all over the world how much they love these books, especially Purposeful Primitive. So if you don't have it, get a copy of it. It's highly recommended. Um, and also check out Strong Medicine. They can be purchased at our site or on Amazon. Uh, also, both Marty and Kirk Kowalski, they're available for seminars and online coaching. <laughs> If you need help with your squat or any lift or nutrition or anything or you want to put on a seminar somewhere with these guys, they're on the East Coast, but uh, we can they'll, travel. They'll usually, they'll usually travel. Well, no, we can uh, travel. We can travel. It just needs to be yeah. lucrative. Right. So to get a hold of them, just go to our athletes page, athletes page at ironcompany.com. Uh, also worth mentioning is we've got Kirk Kowalski has his first power bar coming out, and we went through this. It's going to be IPF spec. It's going to be an absolutely beautiful bar. It's going to be priced right. It's going to be affordable. It's going to be attainable. It's a good bar for commercial gyms or school weight rooms or, you know, uh, anywhere where you guys are doing squats and deadlift and bench and things like that. Uh, that'll be out in a couple of weeks, so check back in a couple of weeks, and we should have that up. Uh, and finally, if there's anything that you want to hear us talk about, any questions you might have, just fire us an email or just uh, send a comment on, on the, the video. It'll be up after this on Facebook, and maybe that's something we'll bring up in the next uh, few weeks or something. But other than that, we're done. I hope you enjoyed that. Tune in next week for part two, techniques and tactics on the squat, and we're out of here. See you, Marty. Thank you, JPEG.